Welcome to the fifth installment of our video series on powerful panels, how to moderate a lively and informative panel discussion. I'm Kristen Arnold and I'm a high stakes meeting facilitator as well as a professional panel moderator. And today's topic is step three in our process about preparing to moderate for your panel. Now, the difference between a mediocre versus an amazing panel all in the preparation. I firmly believe that 80% of the issues that could come up in a panel that would take it into the okay realm, you can prepare and prevent them from happening. You know they say that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think that is so true when facilitating any kind of meeting, especially when you're moderating a panel discussion. So there's a couple of points that you need to pay attention to when you are doing this planning and preparation for that panel. The first thing that you do is you research the topic, the panelists, and the audience. Now, if you are already very familiar with that topic, you probably don't need to do as much information, as much research. However, people like me, I moderate all kinds of panels, stuff that I don't even know anything about. Well, I do need to know what the hot issues are. I do need to know about acronyms. I do need to know about what some of the challenges are. So you need to do a bit of research so that you're conversant, that you're understanding how to move the conversation. So you need to research the topic and then research the panelists. Why were those panelists selected? What, what is their point of view? What are their credentials to be talking about this in the panel discussion format? And then also the audience, because remember, your job is to serve the audience. So who's going to be in the audience? What's their hot buttons? What's their interest? Who are they? What's their demographic composition? So research the audience. And if you can, uh, call a couple of heavy hitters, those people who are influential, very well known in the association or, or company and say, so what are some of the issues that we need to be talking about? And if you can, Get the audience involved even before the event or the panel starts. And there's lots of social media tools that you can use to help you would do that. Once you've got a pretty good idea about the topic, the panelists, and the audience, um, then you want to create the format. Um, there are a couple of different formats. Most of us are familiar with the, uh, you know, the moderator introduces, welcomes and introduces, and then each panelist has an opportunity to speak for a couple of minutes. And then there's some moderator curated questions, and then there's some Q&A, and then you wrap up. That's a pretty typical format. There are other formats, I call them specialty formats, that you can also avail yourselves of. Um, we won't go into those right here, um, but do know that you can kind of change it up. But those are the main elements of a, uh, of a panel discussion. And so you want to create that format. And then you want to create an agenda with some specific time frames because your biggest uh, challenge as a facilitator is time will never be your friend. So you really need to, to map out what are the basic chunks and how much time you're going to take in each chunk because time will get away from you. So map out an agenda. And then you also might want to think about some ground rules to have with your panelists so that they know exactly what you're looking for and how you're going to intervene. So some prevention strategies might be, please limit your comments to less than a minute. A prevention strategy or ground rule might be how you're going to do the Q&A, those kinds of things. So once you've thought through um, who's going to be there, what the topic's about, your panelists, the format, the agenda, some ground rules. Then you want to step back and write your welcome and your introduction. Now, I'm not saying you need to write it out. Um, bullets are fine. Uh, it depends on how comfortable you are in speaking. Um, but you do want to make sure that people feel warm and welcome and engaged in the process from the onset. So think about how you're going to welcome people and how you're going to introduce the panelists. Are they all sitting up on the stage at once? Are you going to call them as you're introducing them? Are you introducing them? Are they going to introduce themselves? All of these are decisions that you make in the planning process. Next, you need to curate the questions. And by curate the questions is as you're going through the research, 
you've been accumulating all kinds of questions that you think the audience might be asking. So you have a really long list of all kinds of possible questions for maybe all the panelists or for select panelists. At this point, you need to really step back and say, so what other questions are out there? And then identify what are the, the real high-level strategic questions, and then what are the more tactical questions? And who would best be able to answer them? Now, you don't want to completely script it, but you do want to have in your pocket at least two questions per panelist, one high level and one tactical for each panelist so that you can get it started and that you have something in case you need to fill in the blanks somewhere. So that is about curating the questions. You also need to decide the Q&A format. It's not, there's just so many decisions that you have to make in this planning piece. The Q&A format, are you going to take questions as you go? Are you going to take questions periodically? Um, are you going to take questions after each topic is discussed? Are you going to take questions at the end? Um, are you going to just do those live? Are you going to screen the questions either through some note cards? Or are you going to use Twitter or some other social media hashtag? Are you going to use your cell phone? There are all kinds of ways that you can solicit questions as well as get the panelists to answer questions. So you need to think through what is your Q&A format because that will lead into what are the logistics that you need. Obviously, you're going to need some place for your panelists to sit. You can either do a formal setting behind a table, which is very traditional, but you know that table gets in the way of you and the audience. It kind of um, is a barrier to that real cozy connection, dialogue, conversational feeling. So you might want to consider a more informal atmosphere where you're sitting in kind of a, a, an open U a little bit. Um, some high boy chairs or nice director chairs uh, have some small tables um, so that you can put some water on them. And it's so it's more of an intimate uh, setting for that real conversation. Um, so you want to think about the room setup. How big is the room? How many people are in attendance? Are you going to need to rope off some of the back chairs? What about the AV? Uh, are you going to have microphones? Are you going to have corded microphones or cordless microphones or lavalier microphones? Or are you going to have stands in the, in the rooms for the audience to uh, do Q&A? Or are you going to do Oprah style and you go around and you ask people questions? You need to think through that Q&A format because that derives a lot of the logistics. So think about the logistics. And, and here's a really interesting part. Think about the backdrop. You do not want to be wearing the exact same color as the backdrop. You, you don't want to blend in and you don't want to be too wacky either. So think about what the backdrop is. Um, another piece about the preparation is you need to confirm the details with the panelists. Send an email saying, here's what's going on, here's what the format is, here's my expectation, can I get your bio, can I get your introduction, and any other things that you're going to need. Um, so you want to confirm those details with a panelist. You might also be thinking about, okay, am I going to use a slideshow? Um, now, personally, I would limit slideshows unless you're doing a traditional presentation style format, which is presentation, 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 and then a Q&A. Um, I would highly recommend that you limit the amount of slides because the point of a panel is about conversation. So let's get to the conversation and not be staring at the PowerPoint slide. Um, I like to use PowerPoints simply as an introductory tool. So that every time that I'm introducing a panelist, there's a slide that goes up. The biography should also be in the program materials, but just in case they're not, a slide goes up for each person. And then there's a, um, a final slide that's up for the duration of the panel that has the panelists in order with their names, maybe a couple of accolades that would remind me like who that person actually is, and then their Twitter handle or other social media handle so that people can actually be participating in the conversation. So I like that as a slideshow. Sometimes a panelist will, will want at maybe one or two to refer to just in case. I would say, okay, but if you're gonna do that for one, you need to do it for all. You assemble one slideshow and then either you 
control the slideshow with a clicker or the AV person controls the slideshow. Don't be swapping out computers right and left. That's just a complete disaster. And then the other tip is that you if you have a person who at the last minute says, Kristen, Kristen, I have one more slide. Can I put it into the slideshow? Your answer is no. We're done. It wasn't that important in the planning. We're done. Um, it, it just starts throwing everything off in the timing. Even though you're like, oh, okay, I could do that. It throws everybody off. So when you're thinking about in the planning and preparation, you assemble the slideshow. Make sure that there are no redundancies, inconsistency. You want to might want to make sure that the panelist information is on the slideshow. The last piece in the preparation, and this is the piece that is not looked at too often from my experience, is about sharing the word. Spreading the word, the promotional aspect, is there something that you can do or the panelists can do that would spread the word? We already talked about reaching out to the audience in using social media. That's one way to spread the word. You could do a video promo piece to put on social media. You could do lots of different things. You can connect with your customers and see if they'd like to attend the event. Think about how can you also spread the word and promote the event. <sighs> so that is step three. It's about preparing. You want to go from mediocre to really be an amazing, powerful panel? It's all in the preparation about researching the topic, the panel, panelists, and the audience. It's about creating a solid format that is going to serve the audience and give them great takeaways. You need to write the welcome and introduction curate the questions, decide the Q&A format, determine the logistics, confirm the details with the panelists, assemble the slideshow, spread the word, so that you are 80% there. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, your planning will pay off magnificently in the actual moderation of the panel, which is going to be our next video segment. So I'll See you then. Thanks for listening.